Hey, Tom, look! The father of our nation is cold. Better build a fire. You're right. Huh? I guess you can have my log. Me? Why should I build the fire? You build the fire. I'm bothered by the smoke. You build the fire. I'm bothered by your attitude. You build the fire. No, you build the fire, Mr. Penmanship. No, you build the fire, log lover. No, you build the fire. No, you build the fire. No, apparently someone built the fire. You big baby! Yo, Tom. Thomas! So, how's the time capsule going? Very well. Now that you've provided that fine recent vintage wine, I plan to bury it this evening. How goes the framing of the Constitution? Great! George's suggestion about the vacuum cleaners really got the old creative juices flowing. Even as we speak, Hancock's polishing up his single-syllable undergarment amendment. I hope they've got a good editor. Well, later, dude. What? What's going to happen later? Hi there. Hello. Feeling better now that there's a fire? Much better, thank you. My teeth were grinding into a fine powder, and that blanket was really making me itch. What's with the canary over the fireplace? Oh, that's an early warning system. It's quite ingenious. The canary is trained to ring the bell madly the minute it smells smoke. Then we know the building's on fire and we run like crazy. Well, why doesn't the fire in the fireplace set it off? I assume it's because all the smoke goes up and out the chimney. Who thought of it? It was invented by Red Edison, the owner of the inn. Who feeds the canary? Actually, no one does. It's a self-feeding canary. It's specially bred with some kind of nutrient-producing bacteria in its gizzard. It's quite a time saver. I expect everyone will have them in the future. I see. Amazing, isn't it? Nice painting of a turkey, dude. I'm glad you think so. The choosing of the national bird is on our agenda for the convention. You know, it actually was a toss-up for a while between the bald eagle and the turkey. And you want it to be the turkey? Well, yes, but I'm afraid I may lose out. You see, there are two schools of thought on the matter. Ben Franklin and I are in favor of the turkey, whereas Jefferson and Washington, for some reason, want the eagle. But Franklin's always outside playing with his ridiculous toys instead of here where he belongs, so it becomes two against one. What's so great about the turkey? They've helped us to survive since we set foot on this continent. They're symbolic of prosperity and the thanks we give for our lives here. Besides, they're kind of cute. What's wrong with the eagle? Well, it's a bird of prey for one thing. I don't think that's an appropriate symbol for our country. Don't you guys have anything better to do? Such as what? We'll figure out what to do about the national debt? Debt? This is a prosperous country. We don't have a debt. I see. Good. Well, gotta go. Goodbye. So, early warning system. Everybody, everybody runs like hell. So long as this canary smells smoke. Sadly, we can't use the chimney as a shortcut at the moment. But with there being a fire and all. Navajo, I think. Chateau de Cheap, 1775.
Okay, who was the idiot who started the fire? Right then. Now, naturally, they won't go back in until I've picked up that gold-plated feather. So, we can afford to go out and have a chat with the outside Founding Fathers now. Uh, uh, excuse me? Leave me alone, I'm too depressed to talk. Yo, Penmaster. I'm afraid we're a little busy right now. Hey, Founding Father. Not now, son. Can't you see we're in the middle of a crisis here? That's a little disappointing. It's broken. Hey, it wasn't me. I bet this never happens to Tom Payne. Smoke's cleared out, somehow. Oh well, our pen now. It looks pretty clear in here now. Say, did you get the pen on our way out? No, I... I found a blanket blocking the chimney. Son, do you know anything about a blanket? Uh, didn't the dude next to you have one earlier? Uh... Uh, hey, catch you later. All right, we got our stuff. Time to hand it to Red Edison. Ah, excellent. I need that for my super battery. Ah, excellent. I need that for my super battery. Ah, the final element for my ingenious battery. Stand back, boy. Give me room to work. Miracle of modern science. It will look lovely here on the shelf until I take it with me to Baltimore. It's Red's battery. Don't look now, but the British are coming, dude. Eh? Where? Is that supposed to be funny? I'm very busy. Apparently, Red's a lot more easily distracted than the Founding Fathers are. It's mine, mine, mine. The meter says that it's at zero power. Uh, that's a shame. However, I happen to know someone who's exper experimenting with something that can provide up to 1.21 gigawatts. And what do you know? Ready for another brush with destiny? His kite happens to have a pocket. Sure, why not? Splendid! Now! She's handling kinda funny! You got it, just hang on there! She's too heavy! I can't control her! Hang on, Ben, hang on! She's breaking up! She's breaking up! Run for your life! Now that was interesting! Yeah, 
Say, can I see that kite for a second? No, I'm taking it back to my lab in Philly right now so I can study the results. Wish me luck. Oh, good. I never got your name. It's Hoagie, sir. Nice working with you, Hoagie. I promise to name an invention after you someday. Gosh, thanks. The meter says it's fully powered. And it's just that simple. Go over to the outhouse. Use it in the plug. Wow. And we're set to go. Next up is Bernard. See you then.